Now, several hundred protesters in Dhaka are demanding President Mohammad Shahbuddin's resignation. They tried to storm the presidential palace in response to his recent comment on ousted former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Protesters were seen scuffling with the police as they barred the demonstrators from entering the presidential palace. The police eventually fired sound grenades. Army troops too intervened as protesters tried to break the barricades of the palace. Security forces fired shots to contain them. According to media reports, two people sustained gunshot injuries and a third was wounded by a sound grenade used to disperse violent mobs. The agitation was in response to the president's comments on Hasina's resignation. Now, in an interview last week, Shahbuddin said he did not have any documentary evidence of Hasina resigning as prime minister before she fled the country. Earlier in an address on the 5th of August, Shahbuddin had said that Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina had tendered her resignation letter to the president and that he has received it. Bangladesh's law affairs advisor, Asif Nazrul, has accused Shahbuddin of falsehood, saying his remarks amount to violation of his oath of office. He added that if he remains firm on his comments, the interim government would need to think whether he's still qualified to hold office. Later, Nazrul, along with the Information Minister, also held a closed-door meeting with Chief Justice Syed Rifat Ahmed. Reports suggest that it could have centered on the modus operandi of removing the president. The rally demanding Shahbuddin's resignation was held by anti-discrimination student movement, which also spearheaded the campaign that led to Sheikh Hasina's ouster. Several other groups under different banners also joined the protests. The students' movement has set a seven-day deadline for Shahbuddin's removal. They've laid a five-point demand, which includes the scrapping of Bangladesh's 1972 constitution. Protesters say the constitution will have to be replaced by a new one, written against the backdrop of the 2024 mass upheaval. The demonstrating groups have vowed to return to the streets with full force if the government fails to meet the demands by this week. As widespread unrest continues across Bangladesh, female students have also taken to the streets demanding action against a dramatic surge in violence against women. Crowds of Bangladeshi female students marched in Dhaka with burning torches. Protesters said that they had hoped that the student-led revolution that toppled the Hasina government would help improve the situation for women. But as per women's rights groups, cases of violence against women increased by more than a quarter in September. The way we felt safe while coming out of the dormitories during the uprising, we want that the post-revolution Bangladesh will be such a country. The uprising raised expectations that there would be no rapes, no harassment of women and absolute security for them. But we do not see any change. We are in the same situation as we were during the fascist regime. Several hundred protesters in Dhaka are demanding President Mohammad Shahbuddin's resignation. They tried to storm the presidential palace and this was in response to recent comments on ousted former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Protesters, they were seen scuffling with the police as they barred the demonstrators from entering the presidential palace. All of this owing to the comments made by the president. In an interview last week, Shahbuddin had said that he did not receive any documentary evidence of Hasina resigning as prime minister before she fled the country. Now, this is in contrast to an address on the 5th of August where he had said that Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina had tendered her resignation letter to the president and that he had received it. In light of this, Bangladesh's law affairs advisor Asif Nazrul has accused Shahbuddin of falsehood, saying his remarks amount to violation of his oath of office. He added that if he remains firm on his comments, the interim government would need to think whether he's still qualified to hold office. Several hundred protesters in Dhaka, they are demanding President Mohammad Shahbuddin's resignation. This after they tried to storm the presidential palace and this was in response to his comments made on the ouster of former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina.
In an interview last week, he had said that he did not have any documentary evidence of Sheikh Hasina resigning as Prime Minister before she left the country. Earlier in an address, however, that was on the 5th of August, he did say that Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, had tendered her resignation letter to the President and that he had received it. For more on this, we're now being joined by Ambassador Humayu Kabir, live from Dhaka. He's a former Foreign Secretary for Bangladesh and the President of Bangladesh Enterprise Institute in Dhaka. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. To begin with, Ambassador, what's your assessment of the situation in Bangladesh? Of course, you know the pro protesters, they tried to storm the presidential palace. Do you think the president will give in to the pressure and perhaps it's time to step down? Well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for, for uh, 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 taking me in. The problem is, I think the president himself has created uh, a problem for himself. Uh, I mean, uh, on fifth of on eighth of August, when the new government was sworn in, and then he mentioned earlier that uh, Prime Minister and Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina had submitted a resignation letter to him, and based on that, he sought the advice of the Supreme Court, and based on that, the uh, interim government was sworn in on eighth of uh, uh, August. And few days back, just he gave an interview with a local newspaper. There, in response to a question, he said that he, uh, he didn't have uh, the, uh, the resignation letter of uh, the then Prime Minister Sheikh Hasin. And that created a new environment. Now, the students uh, who have been uh, the, the, you know, the real power behind this agitation, they are now very unhappy, and they, yesterday they agitated uh, in front of the Bangu Bhavan, which is uh, the president's house. Mm -hmm. And there is a momentum developing uh, uh, on the idea that the president has violated his uh, uh, oath uh, of office, and therefore he should resign. Uh, I think the chief advisor. Uh, this morning uh, met uh, with the BNP leaders and I think the political parties are also coming around and people are uh, thinking that maybe he was trying to uh, uh, trying to do something which is not very clear uh, and uh, that's why I think uh, there is a, there is a feeling uh, in Dhaka that it would be better uh, for him to resign. You know the question is uh, if he resigns then what comes up? Hmm. Uh, there are reports in the press that uh, two of the advisors met the chief justice uh, yesterday. And the speculation is that if he resigns, because at this point uh, there is no parliament or there is no speaker also available to take his resignation uh, a letter in the, if that happens. Uh, so some extraordinary... Uh, measures have to be followed or process, process has to be followed. Hmm. And uh, uh, the constitutional lawyers, uh, the uh, interim government uh, and the student leaders are all consulting. Hmm. So it looks like that uh, there is a, a possibility that uh, the president may have to decide something on his own. Hmm. We don't know exactly how it will take shape, but as of now, the situation uh, is, is slightly uh, uncertain. Uh, uh, Ambassador, absolutely, as you mentioned, these are conflicting statements which has led to this uproar. That being said, what do you think could have triggered these conflicting statements? First, saying that he had received a resignation letter and then to say what he did last week, which has led to such confusion. Well, if you, uh, what I can tell you is that for the last few days, there are rumors that uh, the Army League, uh, some of the Army League leaders were trying to organize the meeting in Agartala where they could uh, do something and so on and so forth. So that really created that kind of tension. And uh, as a reaction to that, some of the student le leaders were organizing demonstrations and so on and so forth. Against that background, the president's uh, remarks or observations came, and that created that you can say add uh, fuel to the fire. And then the whole uh, student community, those who are instrumental in 
in terms of removing the last government, uh, they became very restive. And yesterday, uh, they came down on the streets, agitated before the president's uh, house. And I think uh, the government is trying to find a way out how best to deal with this situation. So I think my sense is that the president himself has uh, unnecessarily created a situation that has put him in this kind of uh, unpleasant scenario or situation. Right. Well, Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us on We On World is One. Of course, how things pan out, that remains to be seen, something that we'll be closely monitoring. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay, thank you. Thank you. For latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.